Dead and on. here we are. I'm, 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 <laughs> you know what? I and might, here we are. I might step away from the camera and just become a director. I like it. <laughs> I mean, hey, that's that's what you want to do. <laughs> I I couldn't leave Barry an Amarok like that though. Yeah, you know what? I I don't know who else could do uh, either of those characters. <laughs> I I tell you what, let's start there. Welcome everybody uh, to Echo Chamber, the session in between sessions. Uh, today, you know, we 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 had a session and i'm gonna I, we'll, we'll save this for stats chat a little bit but you know I, I was looking at the damage done last session there was over 700 points of damage done in wow. those last couple battles and that that to right. me is crazy because you know you think of the other campaign we're what level eight nine and mm -hmm. that one fight with nasana we did like 600 and or 700 and she did 700 and in this one we're level five so it's just crazy the amount of damage output sometimes I, mean, uh -huh. I blame yeah, this, Cleek I've, and Mordai, but uh, this I would say this group is more um, damage oriented. You know, the other group we're a little we're we're pretty balanced. You know, we have you know Adrian is you know healer, but he's also can do a little bit of damage, and they have Amrook and and um, Siddle and Jack. They're their big damage dealers. Um. Warwick doesn't do too much damage. He's more of a uh, situational um, support. <clears throat> uh, uh, Griswold is... Griswold? He's he tank. absorbs damage. He absorbs damage. Um, and Ashley's, you know, she, she's getting caught up in how, how the rogue works. And, but she's... She... she, she, she uh, I'm going to say she's a specialist. She's kind of a sniper in a way, you know? She picks and chooses her shots. <clears throat> That's a good way to put it. You know, picks and chooses yeah. shots and stays stealthy and stuff. I, I could see her uh, doing quite a bit of damage eventually. I could see Althea, yeah. like, yeah. really putting out some damage damage output um, at yeah, some yeah. point. We'll see. But this, but this group is, I mean, uh, pretty... Pretty driven. In, I mean, you got a warlock, wiz, a sorcerer, and a monk. Uh, that that, and, and now you have a barbarian. Um, there's a lot of there's a lot of damage going around. It, you know, the other thing too is uh, <clears throat> there was a lot of damage done because you guys went up against a couple of things that had resistance. So oh. you actually kind of do a little bit. You kind of have to do some double damage on us. That's true. That's true. Uh, so it takes twice as much damage output mm -hmm. to actually take it down. That, that makes sense as well. But no, I, I definitely agree with that um, evaluation that we, we are high dam higher damage. Now, you have done several campaigns. Would, would you say that's kind of based on the mood in which, you know, the... the campaign is put out because i feel like you know the other one we were a little timid because for most of us it, it was kind of our first and so that that mood was like all right i'm gonna do this because i kind of understand it it means this to me uh and then this one was like all right i got the feeling for it let's do this shit uh, you know what i mean or or would you say yeah no i guess it's i guess it's kind of the case it depends on the, the campaign setting i guess um yeah, that, that might be the case. Um, you know, I'm trying to think, like, a, a lot of mine, too, is... Uh, there's a lot of combat going on in mine. Um, where Garrett's is, is um, more bigger bigger enemies, uh, less enemies, where I, I kind of tend to... You know, I'm going to throw a couple little things at you, then throw kind of a, a medium side. You know, I'm kind of where you try to wear you down a little bit. You know, I think you should highlight couple there because there was a crap ton of skeletons. <laughs> yeah, that was fun. <laughs> I I gotta give that you props fun. on that. That little like skeleton uh, uh, Metroid uh, that that like rolled up and then when we killed it, it exploded into others. I was like, uh, that. I, I can't. Take, I that can't. Is... I can't take credit for that. I gotta give credit to uh, the writers of. Uh, who is that? Uh, the writers for 
Ghosts of the Salt Marsh, wrote that particular that particular module. So, nonetheless, it. it was still epic for me. And then being a cleric as well, being able to use that turn finally. I know we talked about it a little bit last week, but I mean. I don't think I gave you enough props on the monster itself. We talked about the damage yeah. aspect. I I, re I was like that was that was one of the reasons why I was like okay I'm gonna throw this in there because this is really cool I like this. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and yeah, then sure. I was I was I was looking out for Barry because I know he's uh, I thought you know what I'm gonna throw some stealth at him see see if he pulls out the turn. Uh, for sure. For the love of God, turn. <laughs> you know, one more level and I can use turn twice in yeah, a shorter yeah. long rest. So. Yeah. Looking forward to that as we go, but uh, not that I'm not looking forward to getting back to campaign one eventually. You know, I do love Amrook and yeah. uh, that campaign, and we we will get back there eventually. But um, another thing, uh, so let's go to the lightning first. I was gonna do the other, but let's go to lightning first because they, we're already talking about combat and stuff. It just makes more sense. Uh, so we talked about, I think it's second edition, correct me if I'm wrong, the lightning bouncing and how mm -hmm. you and Garrett and, and some others, you know, I've seen, uh, CR do it as well. Yeah. Um, yeah. and in the heat of battle, like, so in, when we were talking about it, we were trying to figure out like, okay, so how does this work? Would it just hit and keep bouncing if it was like in like a, you know, 20 foot hallway until either a, like you said, it breaks down a door or B, it just keeps bouncing till it runs out of energy and, and go ahead. It's, it's always, it's always gone until it ran out of energy until it ran out of its, it's, uh, you know, uh, not radius, uh, uh, distance so yeah <clears throat> uh, yeah I, I thought at first okay it's kind of like a game of pool you're like measuring mm -hmm. up the angles hoping you're right a little easier on roll 20 than it would be <laughs> in, yeah yeah uh, theater of the mind but then like of course i started thinking as well it's kind of like percy's like shot in the in mm -hmm. the anime series right just bounce yeah, out the yeah. three things bounce, take out yeah. his jaw like that's oh uh, yeah. that it it could build for some epic situations and i really like that feature are there any other features like that from um second edition third edition anything you know um <clears throat> i gotta think about that you know there, there's always been kind of some neat rules that they've you know did away with um in the older editions and I, yeah you know what i gotta kind of think about that um what yeah i gotta kind of i gotta i gotta think about that one yeah i i like the ability to home rule some of those rules uh yeah i i i am a rules lawyer as we all know i can't help myself i i you mm -hmm. know people say stuff and i, I got better this last time you noticed evan was chiming in on the rules uh -huh. and i was just sitting yeah. there like mm -hmm. uh, -huh, uh -huh. keeping my mouth shut so i am actively working on it but even though I'm, I'm a bit of a rules lawyer, you know, it's, it's up here, um, I still enjoy the ability to tweak those rules as needed. Mm -hmm. And I think that, that that can really make the difference in, like, a really rigid campaign that you're not as into and, and mm -hmm. a campaign in which it's a little bit more fluid. H yeah. have, you, have you ever been in, like, a campaign where it's like, nope, that's the rules, deal with it, or, or anything like that? There's one or two that uh, I'll say a friend of mine. Do oh, you think you're bad with uh, no rules? Whether he, uh, I'll just say he, he's uh, uh, Edgar Schneider of uh, <laughs> of D and D, and it, it got to the point where it'd be like, okay, dude, you need to put the book down because he. I mean, he would be like, well, but you know, uh, a page. 375 in the, in the player's handbook this says this and but and it'd just be like okay well you, you gotta stop dude this, this, you, you, yeah you know who else i thought would be like that i thought murph would be yeah. like that too oh really yeah i thought for sure he was gonna come in yeah. knowing the rules and just being like no it says this so i can do it um yeah. but no it's just something about it that i enjoy the, the knowledge aspect behind knowing how mm -hmm. thing the mechanics that's be, probably yeah, yeah. best knowing the mechanics uh, and, uh -huh. and but nonetheless I do like the flexibility and, and yeah yeah 
I think we are as a group flexible, like with the way we handle uh, the nat twenties on death saves and different stuff like that. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah, for sure. Um, which brings me to death saves with Cleek. Cleek gets two death saves. You caught that. I didn't say a word. I, you know, I was so mad at myself because uh, uh, there's a couple things. Uh, and no, sorry, Rusty, out there. Uh, if you're watching, listening later on, but there's a couple things that I really could have screwed Cleek over with, and I forgot completely. And I was like, "Oh no!" And uh, I was like, "Ah, it's, I'm already like three, three rounds—not three rounds, but like three turns after the after his go." And I was like, "Oh man, I, I can't retcon it right now. It's, there's like too much stuff that happened." I'm like, "Ah, oh, just <laughs> all right, I'll wing it." <laughs> That and... because he was okay. he was in the he was in the circle for the spirit garden guardians that would have taken him down uh, on the top of his turn and that's what I forgot. I thought, like, damn it, that was the whole reason I brought that up too. Yeah, I I honestly I think you know pe- people talk about like DM versus the party and how it's it's that. It's like you're against each other, but I think you could have yeah. killed him three times over, and you and you chose not to based on the characters. When when the, um, I think it might have been a veteran, decided mm-hmm. not to finish him off because you know he's down, he's not a threat. I th- I think that yeah. was like a matter of intelligence. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Whereas opposed, if it was a monster or undead or something that just has a killing sort of. Uh, mentality uh, i think cleek might have um <laughs> you might have seen the end of cleek i don't know i yeah I, I what character would you have guessed rusty would have made next Art, artificer artificer see i i don't know yeah. i feel like he's saving that for another campaign so i you don't know a full he... campaign yeah i don't know i don't know i don't yeah i, I don't think he's i don't think he's gonna do it for the one shot Oh, that's... Uh, we didn't talk to everybody about no, the one-shot, but we can go ahead and announce it. This is Echo Chamber. We do what we want on here. Uh, March 6th. <laughs> <laughs> March 6th. We're planning the one-shot. Uh, guest DM, Evan Sawyer. I'm excited. I know he's excited. He's probably thinking, this is going to be awesome, uh, because that's what he says. And we will have possibly, hopefully, at least one other guest uh maybe two and and i'm i'm oh. pretty excited to bring them in uh as well as excited for evan to dm yeah i'm excited about that evan being on that that's uh um i've been ever since ever since sunday night i'm thinking I play i was thinking about it earlier i'm thinking hmm i'm like a rogue i kind of like i like playing a rogue oh but i haven't played a warlock mm. all right so we all go rogues this, we all go rogues <laughs> Party of Rogues. We all go uh, Rangers. <laughs> mm. uh, yeah, no, I think. Um, what are we starting? Level three, right? Level three characters yeah. for this. Uh, I, yeah. I'm excited about it. Haven't decided myself on the character, but I am leaning towards a barbarian. I, oh, I yeah? played a barbarian in a one shot uh, that Garrett DM'd before we started recording. And I really enjoyed the mechanics of it. It was very simple, like Fighter, don't get me wrong. But there's just something about it, uh, you know, with the rage and with um, reckless attacks and different stuff like that, that I enjoyed. Um, After playing Barry, I do struggle a little bit, not knowing what the spells are, but... It's, it's like the preparation of the spells. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Especially with mm-hmm. Cleric, because you have all of the spells. Uh, mm-hmm. But it's based on... And, and you know, because with Adrin, you have so many, and you have to like say, okay, I'm going to prepare these eight for today. And then you get in a situation, and you're like, crap, Cleek's down, I didn't prepare Revivify. You know what I mean? Uh, yeah, that's the one thing about spellcasters. There's always the one or two spells that you always have in reserve... Even if you never use them, mine's Blesser Restoration, Revivify, um, Dispel Magic's a good one. Those are the ones that, like, I might use them once or twice, but they're game changers. They can change, you know. Mm-hmm. If I could have gotten to, if I could have gotten to um, uh, Reed in the Nasana battle, 
had lesser restoration. That would have freed him from the paralysis, and you know that's that that could have changed things in the fight because he had three rounds without Reed. You know, mm-hmm. <clears throat> um, just things like that. You know, yeah, for sure. For and sure. and and we saw how the counter spell worked. So spell magic counter spell. Those are those are. We, we've also great. seen dispel magic with the uh, suggestion yeah. before, so yeah, I, I, there's just so many like that that yeah. you could constantly, you know. I even think like, okay, if if I had uh, detect magic, would we've been able to see mm-hmm. Bayleaf? You know what I mean? Different stuff like that. If he had a magic item on him, would you be able to see him? Like, no, I don't know can't. if that's how that works. I didn't yeah, know, no. but that that was my thought process. I was like, ah, I don't have it prepared anyway, so I didn't go yeah. down that road, but. It's just different interactions like that. Yeah. And spellcasters, man, that's just, it's tough. Like, I don't, mm-hmm. do not envy um, our bard or yourself, because, like, you got to always have healing spirit, and then that freaking dwarf's always asking you for good berries, right? Good berry. Yeah. <laughs> you can't help it. He's addicted, okay? Addiction <laughs> is a disease. <laughs> All right, I do want to get into stats chat. One more question for, or one more point before we get into stats chat. Uh, you know, G Money and myself were talking after after last week's session, and we were talking about, you know, I brought up that it's crazy to me uh, that you know you, Rusty, even Evan, Keegan, uh, Garrett, uh, Ryan, like that's crazy. Yeah, all work together for like five years minimum, uh, and had two interactions like just crazy to me and then I, that, that like you know the campaign one brought us all together and then we yeah. did some one shots and, and just kept growing and it's crazy yeah i mean i've talked to you know garrett a couple times before and started playing but it, like i said just a couple things for work um uh keegan and evan um i would see in the hall and uh for the longest time uh, we couldn't, us in IT could not discern which one was which, so we just called them the Keegan brothers. <laughs> um, uh, Ryan, I think I might have said three words to before before all this, and and same with Rusty. I think uh, seeing Rusty a couple times, you know, it's just uh, it's kind of funny uh, how how D and D works like that. Um, my when I was in college. Um, we had a whole wing at uh, good old Clarion University, Ralston Hall, third, third second floor, um, where we pretty much the whole wing was practically planned. And we had a couple guys from uh, third floor that came down, too, and uh, it, we would just take over the, the, the um, one of the rec rooms, and it was just... I, there was a couple times where the RA would come in, be one o'clock in the morning. You guys are too loud, and he just closed the door on us. <laughs> but it, it, it's funny how how uh, you know it can bring different people together. Yeah, like uh, you know, and, and it's not that you know we're, we're a super diverse group either. Not like you know uh, different um, beliefs or anything like that. It was just you guys never. Nothing brought you together, yeah. and this did. Uh, so, so I gotta ask. Um, you know, I did talk to Garrett. I might share his feelings on it, but I gotta ask you: What are your thoughts when you walk into Evan's house for the first time? Because for those of you who don't know, uh, you know, I had just joined the the company we work for, and um, you know, Garrett and Evan approached me about doing this D and D thing that they've been talking about it for months, and they, you know, they hadn't pulled the trigger, and so I was like, let's do it. Let's just plan a session, get there, let's do it. And so we planned the session, and then secretly, uh, I went and talked to Eric, <laughs> and I remember <laughs> I, I walked into his office, and I was like, Yo, E, you play D and D, and he starts looking around the room, <laughs> and he's like, How do you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Like it, I. I mean, that, that's pretty much, like, what I do. I, I mean, I, I... Yeah, go ahead. Sorry, it, continue your story. No, it, for sure. And, and that's, like, dead on. Like, it was a bit of an assumption on my part. You know, uh-huh. I'm a nerd, so I'm like, 
you know what this guy's probably in there too he's probably into it even if he hadn't played before let's get him in on this uh and so then i secretly invited you i think i even told you like i'm not telling him who's coming i'm just telling him yeah. someone's coming and and uh -huh. so you walk in the door of evan's house what's what's like going through your mind at this point because i never like asked you like your point of view I from it i don't know it was kind of exciting for me i was i was excited it was kind of like uh I, I guess uh, not to sound inflated or anything like that, but it was kind of like a rock star kind of feeling. Like I know these guys are <laughs> are are rookies at this, and they're going to be like, "Oh no, you know, uh, what's what's E going to do about it? You know, how's this is going to?" And so, I mean, there was a little trepidation on my part because I'm not sure how 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 you guys are going to get into the character. You know, is this is this going to be? Uh, you know, I, I've and I've I've played with different different people. They they really get into character, and then some are like, okay, my character is just going to do this, and I'm cool with either way. You know, right, like right. having the voice, or just you know, it, it's it's fun for me either way. But um, so you know, there was a little bit of trepidation on on my part on that, but uh, yeah, I don't know. It was a lot of fun. It was you know just seeing like Evan, like his eyes kind of like what. <laughs> <laughs> for sure that i mean that goblin fight for you was like nothing but for us as newbies it uh -huh. was like evan oh, that, falls that out of the cart <laughs> that cracked me up for sure um and i'm looking forward to that experience with with our guest uh i think they're gonna have the same reaction i think that's awesome um uh -huh. But so I will. I was hoping Garrett was on so he could give his uh, POV. But I, I'll just give a little tidbit. You know, I kind of asked him. You know, what what went through your mind, same as I asked you, and like how nervous were you? Because at this point, you know, the reason they they were pushing off, you know, everybody didn't quite know what they were doing, but they were gonna they were uh -huh. ready to muddle through it. So uh -huh. you know, Garrett said he he was at. On the yeah. nervous scale, zero to ten, uh, he was uh -huh. at about an eight. When whenever I was like, <laughs> "Let's just do this," uh, and uh -huh. then you know he had talked himself down. You know what? Nobody nobody else knows how to play either, so we're just gonna go through this together. Uh -huh. So he had like talked himself down a little bit, and you know he was okay uh -huh. with it. He said, "You walk through the door." He went to a twelve. <laughs> <laughs> because I mean he had no clue who was coming. <laughs> That's I awesome. felt a little bad when he told me that, but then I was like, that's uh -huh. awesome. Because you know what? It worked out. Awesome. <laughs> if it yeah, hadn't no, worked it out, it, I'm, he might hate me today, but it worked out. Yeah. No, that's awesome. Yeah, so this all is, of uh, you watching, that, if, if you kinda... get a chance, invite someone that you don't typically talk to and, and just have that experience with them. It, it is actually kind of funny because of Kurt J. Lesker Company. This is my second group um, that I've played D and D with through Kurt J. Lesker Company. First group was uh, through a guy at work um, that worked in IT, and he said, "Hey, we play D and D," um, <clears throat> and and um, 20 years later, um, two of the guys, one of the guys that used to work at KJLC years and years and years ago, um, uh is a really good friend of mine and one of the other players that that he introduced me to is you know a really good friend of mine who i play uh with still today and um uh you know it, it's funny how how that works um my guys from college uh that i play thursday's night thursday nights with um i i you know i, I kind of fell out of contact with them for years and years and you know um pandemic rolls around and we learn how to do D and D stuff on the internet. And, um, uh, my friend A is like, Hey, uh, get you guys interested in playing uh, online, online game through zoom. And we we're just going to do, you know, theater of the mind. And, uh, he, he ran for a while and he does theater of the mind. And, and, um, so they asked me to run. And so I was like, okay, well, we're going to use roll 20. So, and here, here I am, you know, um, you know, reconnecting those those uh friends now so D is awesome like that 
for sure for sure it's yeah i forget what late night show it was but you know uh, somebody was talking about their experience and playing with the campaign for like three or four years and like it's it's the best i've ever heard it put that it is uh, an experience that you're all sharing together that with without an actual concreteness mm -hmm. to it you know what i mean and, it, mm -hmm. and it's very abstract to think about so to, to explain to somebody oh it's like a dream but you're all in that dream it, it's hard to explain but once you yeah, do yeah. it and you like even if you only invest <laughs> in it a little bit uh mm -hmm. you, you get so much more out of it you know yeah yeah but uh with that, I think it's time because I don't want to jip anybody out. We we got plenty of stats to go over, so it's time for yeah. stats jip. Stats jip. Bring mine up so I can follow along. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and kick the map on here. We have the latest encounter up. I I will point out last week I was a little bit um, boosted, we'll say. Uh, you know, with with uh, turn giving me 10 kills, mm -hmm. uh, and this week I didn't have a single one. <laughs> you didn't? I thought you had one. No, nah, Barry no? didn't get any. I got I got as Mordai before mm. G jumped on. Mor Mordai, Mordai Queen, uh, him and, uh, I want to say... Him, Cleek, and Jack were, were all tied at three kills. Mm, okay. Uh, and this was for both inter bo both um, encounters. Uh, so the mm -hmm. culture club, uh, <laughs> and I, I, I caught that cult thing. Uh, and then mm -hmm. uh, Jack, I gotta hover over this one because it's not quite wide enough. But it, Jack attacks the Bodic ball sack. I like that <laughs> one. Um, I sent Eric a message in the middle of the day, just cracking up about it. I was in the middle. It, it was later, but. Uh, yeah, so so Barry uh, underperformed this time as far as kills, but you know what? We spread them out quite a bit. Um, <laughs> and then I, I did want to show this damage down here at the bottom. Uh, so out of both interactions, both both encounters, uh, let me actually close this one. Total of 702 damage, as I said, and then so that was... The ones, the first interaction was 425. The second one was 277. 702 damage. I feel is nothing to scoff at. No, no, that's uh, that's quite a bit, right? And then if we look at the yep. being attacked by 284. So, you know what? For mm -hmm. level five characters, we took some damage, and I didn't yeah. feel in, in the middle of it. Like I was like, I'm the healer, but everybody's looking pretty good. Yeah. Until you actually need it. So I can only imagine you as Adrian with Healing Spirit. Like, everything's going good until you absolutely need it. And then it's like, guys, come here, come here, come here. You know what I mean? It's yeah. that, that, that rush. Um, you know, Cleek took the took a good blunt of that. Um, and then uh, Nine also, you know, he has damage resistance so, uh, when he's raging. So, you know, he's, he's taken... He's taken quite a bit of damage too but he's absorbed some of it but yeah sorry rusty cleek cleek got beat up on i think you know this last couple of you know what i put it under the well-deserved category because if you remember early on in the campaign i don't think we mm -hmm. had had the streams that at that point cleek was just coming in pop popping everything mm -hmm. anything that looked at him the wrong way he, he was yeah. throwing claws at you know what i mean yeah yeah so i, I mean, think this he... is payback yeah, I mean, and he still is, too. He's still dishing out the damage. For sure. He went in through a little dip. I looked at the uh, fighting mm -hmm. trends. He went in a little dip, but then, you know, this week he came came back out, claws showing, so. <laughs> uh, I did want to point this out, because he did this for uh, Barry, uh, separating Mordai's healing into temporary <laughs> HP. Still working out the tweaks there, but I, I, I like it. I, I, don't, I guess it's an extra step for you from the stats point of view. But I, I do feel like it's kind of not healing in the same way that yeah. it's healing. It's, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's a I mean, mitigated big damage, right? Right. Bi I mean, big picture, yeah, I mean, you can say you're getting 11 hit points back um, with that temporary HP in, in, a, in a sense. But, uh, yeah. That, it makes Barry feel so much better about being the healer, you know? <laughs> <laughs> I 
Uh, Barry doesn't have a problem with it. Barry is pretty chill. I Carl may not be as chill, but Barry's pretty chill. Uh, yeah, it's funny too. Is I always forget Ashley. You know, she's a druid. She has cure wounds too. So she does. She mentioned it. So I I had just healed Cleek with cure wounds. I was like, all right, I rush over, and then you know, trying to boost him up a little bit, and then afterwards she was like, oh, I have cure wounds too. I could do it. <laughs> it's like. Hold on to that because we may need it here in a minute. <laughs> it's it's kind of funny because uh, anybody that watches uh, Critical Role, uh, especially with uh, season three here, uh, Fern kind of reminds me of that way too. Like, you know, they're they're looking for like who can who can cure and and you know it's, there's uh, uh, <clears throat> Robbie's character and um, and FCG. FCG, yeah. And, and uh, I'm like, well, Ashley can do cure wounds too. <laughs> and uh, if she has you know. it prepared, as we mentioned. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, it's kind of even like uh, campaign two for them, where they had a cleric who yeah. was more invested <laughs> in doing the damage. So I think it's just. So I don't know if it's like when you create the character, you are kind of subconsciously deciding this is how this character is going to be played and you don't, and when you prepare the spells, you, you don't prepare those healing spells or if it's yeah. like personal and you're, you're kind of like working through those things. I'm not sure, but you know. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I think that, that, I think you're, you're right on. I, mm -hmm. Yeah, I think it goes either way. There's been times I've created a character and during character creation, okay, this character's going to be like this, he's going to be like that. Two sessions in, this character took a sharp <laughs> left somewhere and is completely different. Uh, 180, not even just a 90 yeah. degree. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, no, when I when I created Barry, like, I was like, no, he's 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 good Barry. He's going to be the healer. And, and you know, I, I wanted that little bit of raise the dead and have a little fun with it, too. But, you know... <laughs> As far as he's he's a follower, so he's he's mm -hmm. gonna be a healer as much as possible and just follow along. <clears throat> Another thing I didn't know until I played Mordai. Mordai has an intelligence of negative one. <laughs> uh -huh. Did not realize that. Yep. <laughs> I was gonna I, I ask think... Garrett about that. Like, how hard is that to play an intelligence of negative one? Well, I mean, you you have the you're slightly less than average. <laughs> so we're saying zero is the average here. Well, what his his intelligence is what eight probably, somewhere nine. There. Yeah, so nine is average. Nine ten is average. Okay. Um, yeah, I guess when you think about it that way. Yeah. So I mean, he he was he's a C student. <laughs> he's a C student. He's a C student. I like it. I like it, nonetheless. Um, it's, it's comical, like the little quirks yeah. that you get out of just building the character. You know, like you're like, oh, he's got crappy intelligence. This guy's gonna be a moron. You know what I mean? Uh -huh. Like that type of stuff. Like, and yeah. that's based on you know those decisions and how it plays out. Uh, to break down the healing a little bit more, um, just want to pull this up. So this is for last session. Uh, the cure wounds doing 37. Mass healing word. First time I've used that. Uh, and then healing word. I'm not sure if I did the healing word. Who did the healing word? It was not. It was um, on the enemy side. That's where it came from. Yeah, it from. was. That's, that's where. Right. Yeah, that's where. That's right. And there's yeah. a little cure wounds. I think that came from the enemy side too. Yeah. Yeah, there was. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then I got I to uh, I put that on the um, got to put that on the the board there to, to filter those out. Got to remember to do that. <laughs> I think I like them in there. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, because then we can see some of that healing that the other side's doing to mitigate mm -hmm. our damage. Personally, okay. I like it in there. All right, I'll leave it in. You know, because because we can kind of see down here in the uh, bar chart, you know, who who is receiving that healing, uh, and mm -hmm. obviously, you know, Click taking the most damage did did receive a lot of that. And then if we break down, you know, like Inspiring Leader, we can see that's all friendly, and I I personally like it. And okay, you know, cool. let me let me clear it out and just look at it from a bigger picture picture standpoint. I don't think it hinders anything. You know what I mean? Like you're gonna have yeah, a right, couple right, of those, right. but I think ultimately the mm -hmm. party mm -hmm. will have the the biggest end. So I don't think you have anything to worry about there. Yeah, I like it. Um, 
of course do the healing we got to jump into the damage uh, this is set for last one so we're going to clear that out this is overall damage and then we'll break it down the final two encounters <laughs> Uh, if we look at the, the overall damage first, Cleek's still up there, as we talked about. Mordai, because of his freaking fireball, which I wanted to do a fireball so bad just because I've never done a fireball. Uh. The rooms were also cramped. I was like, I can't do it. <laughs> so I had to throw Shatter out there a couple times. And then Jack doing some damage this time as uh -huh. well. Uh -huh. uh, if we look at just these... Oop, got a control click. Uh, just oh. these two... Um, Nine was was actually coming up in 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 ranks there. I noticed that as, yeah. as you said, you know, uh, I almost feel like on the other one we have a funnel chart that you can switch between damage and um, damage taken. Uh, you know, I, yeah, I think yeah. I mentioned yeah. you know the amount of absorption you do kind of is your presence, and I think Nine would be top there. I think yeah, definitely. Well, he might fight Cleek for it a little bit because Cleek's. Mm. Cleek is more like the Amrook, and Nene is more like the Griswold. But but yeah, even yeah. Cleek's AC, you you saw it like it's hard to hit uh, those two. <laughs> I you know I was rewatching the the stream and everything else too, and I'm looking at my rolls on, on the 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 previous rolls on the through the chat and everything else. I'm like, oh, why can't I hit these guys? I'm like so close on a couple of them too, and I'm like, man, there's a couple on that Bodak. I was like, damn. So tell me what you forgot to do with the Bodak that would have done an additional damage to us. So the, the Bodak does, uh, if you're within 30 feet of him, you take five damage. You take, you, yeah, you take five damage on the start of your turn. Oh, just for being close to him, you'd take just like psychic close. damage because you're terrified of no, him. Yeah, there's no, there's no save, there's no nothing. And then there's okay. the, the gaze that he has, which mm -hmm. is, uh. Um, at the beginning of your turn, uh, you make a con save. Um, if you fail it, you take uh, something d10. I want to say it was 4d10. But if you fail that DC, which was like DC 13, if you fail it by 5 or more, you automatically drop to 0 hit points. You're un automatically unconscious. Uh, note to healers, hold on to healing word for situations with the Bodak. Yeah. Yeah. That, that Bodak is no joke. Pretty crazy. I mean... Yeah. Alright, we'll just have to keep that in mind as, as we go on uh, with the fights that you could be uh, throwing some heavier punches here now. Yeah, a little bit, a little bit. <laughs> um, and then uh, we'll just jump into the All Encounters view just to see overall damage so far, I think. I, I didn't look at it myself until right now. 3,500 points of damage that we have done as a party total throughout the campaign, which we only started this at uh, episode 13. So we have 12 episodes of damage before that not calculated. I bet you could say that our damage output, it was smaller creatures, but I, I bet you could say that mm -hmm. that was over double. So we probably have seven grand of damage in this party yeah yeah no um you know the the dragon's not in here the um uh, the fight with uh you know the the initial fight with the um Bellic, is his name the druid <clears throat> and the tree and that mm -hmm. whole that whole uh, uh that that uh, one as, as we started mm -hmm. the dungeon crawl right past that yeah. room yeah mm -hmm. That yeah. one was a pretty big battle. Yeah. Yep. I would say we we get seven grand easy. Uh, I mean, can't can't say that for certain, but I I would. I think it's safe yeah. to make that assumption. Yeah. Um, no, I. I uh... Built for damage, Mordai's misfits. I think you know synonyms. Mm-hmm. <laughs> All right, with that, I, I know we did want to look at buffs. Last thing, uh, Bless coming out from the other side to hurt us. When you did that, I, I was like, that son of a gun. Like, <laughs> I, I did want to make comment that uh, Bless really came into effect these last, these last two battles. Um, 
there was a couple in in the in the first battle the, the first battle that um went well went against you um but in especially in the uh, bodak um encounter that there was i want to say like three or four things that but the um that bless helped with i know one was one of the saving throws for um for clique for the death gaze oh nice uh, yeah so and then there was uh i want to say the killing shot i think the killing shot for jack on the bodak was was because of uh because of bless all right nice i mean i i it's it's no secret that bless is in my opinion the most underrated spell in the game uh mm -hmm. w when you count out probably healing spirit would be the only one that may tie it uh, I, I also like Bane, but I think Bless, it just, it's so versatile, you know, and then once your character gets up there in levels, <laughs> you can cast it at higher levels to spread it out even more, and it just, like, yeah. if, if you are in any way, shape, or form able to cast Bless, do it, you know, start, start yeah. it off with Bless, if you yep. have high AC, you're not going to get hit most of the time anyway, so you keep it up. Yeah, yeah. You know. And, but, and like I said, it, it helps both in offense and defense um As there's we've seen. two examples yeah, yeah for sure you know and it's funny because you think oh it's just another d4 but you never know you never know when you need that one that, just the one, one. i i, I at one. least twice i remember thinking okay that that hits as long as he rolls a one and he can't mm -hmm. not roll a yeah. one right so yeah. like in fact, I think Clegg's final round, he rolled all three of his and then mm -hmm. rolled the D4s, and the D4 made it hit by one. He rolled a one mm -hmm. on it, and it bumped it up from 12 to 13, and it hit. Yeah. 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 So, yeah. my favorite. I don't know. Mm -hmm. I can't help it. Uh, Amrok doesn't know anything about magic, but if he did, he would cast Bless. <laughs> he probably wouldn't because he's in there and would get hit immediately. <laughs> and it would be a waste of a turn for him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah right which is probably how evan feels with griswold yeah i think that's where, where that's tough for gris and he tries I... to cast it but you know when you're the tank you're you're gonna it's that a good a chance you're gonna tricky because you have to like mm -hmm. you know figure out your placement in the <laughs> your positioning uh and whether you're gonna get hit or not whether you should cast it whether somebody else can cast it you know that those are the different dynamics of the team fight that, you know, people who like even people who fought together for a long time in in the sessions like still don't quite do as efficiently as it could be done, mm -hmm. uh, which is where my my rules lawyer brain comes in. I'm like, oh, you could do this and you do this and then we synergize. Yeah. And yeah. 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 But, yeah. I got right. you. I know what you mean for sure so with that we'll go ahead and end the session thank you everybody for watching uh and we'll see you on sunday yeah what wait what was your what was your sign off this past sunday i forget uh just remember those of you with paranoia out there you're not alone i like it that's where we're ending it see you guys